Would you pray with me, please? Father, again, we pray for your spirit to work in our hearts here, to open up our whole life to you. If we have any walls, tear them down through your word. Help us to know the reality of you in our life right now, the reality of your love and the reality of your power, healing power. I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Folks, if, uh, if, yes, sir. If I have not followed the street, who have neglected something to the greed of one another? I did that purposely. Well, I'll explain afterwards, but I did that purposely. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> if your doctor had uh, told you that you or a loved one, maybe your spouse or, or your, your child, was um, had a serious illness, a very serious disease. What do you think your response would be to that news? I just I want you to just think about this. I don't want you to to, to speak it out. I got another one for you. When you look at our society around us today, a society that touches our lives and that. Uh, influences our life every day. When you look at this society and you look at such things as oh, politics or uh, you look at politicians or you look at some of the rulings that came down from the Supreme Court, especially like with abortion and same-sex marriage, or when you look at what they are broadcasting on the uh, na national news every single night and how incredibly biased and, and slanted they are, and if you look at Hollywood and the, the lifestyle they are promoting and really trying to cram down our throats through the movies, through television, through commercials, and you look at all of that, you look at the society that is most definitely anti-God and anti-Christian, how does that make you feel deep down? Again, don't answer. I want you to just think about that. Now, I brought these questions to you today for a reason. The reason is not to get you irritable or angry or upset or anything like that. You see, I have found that when, when these types of questions are asked to Christians, usually, and not always, but, but usually, there are one or two ways that they respond. First of all, you have uh, the people who will be angry, disgusted, frustrated, maybe even feeling fearful. And on the other hand, you have those that seem that no matter what is happening to them, whether it be great or whether it be horrible, or no matter what is happening around them, they're doing just fine. They're okay. So why the difference here? Well, I think it has to do a lot with your eyesight. And what I mean by that is that if your eyes are focused on this life, this world, uh, the here and the now, all those things that are right there in front of you, screaming for your attention, yeah, the chances are you're going to be in that first category there. You're, you're, you're going to be upset and frustrated and, and angry and, and maybe even fearful or feeling hopeless or something like that. That's because what you're doing is you're looking through worldly eyes. And now the best way I can think of explaining what worldly eyes is a way I've, I've told you before. It's almost like you're looking at a painting or you're looking at a picture, only you are so close to that picture that your nose is right up against it. Now, if you're like this, there's no way you can see the whole picture, right? And what you do see, you try it when you get home. Look, you take a picture that it's blurry. Your eyes can't focus. You're just too close to it. That's seeing through worldly eyes. Now, however, if your eyes are on the Lord, and what I mean by that is that if, if your eyes or your, your trust is in the Lord, your trust is in your Lord Jesus, you, you, you uh, are following Him, you're trusting in Him, you're loving Him, if that's where it is, or as Paul put it in uh, that Colossians passage today, if you are seeking those things that are above, in other words, you're focused on the Lord God, chances are that no matter what's happening in your life, no matter what's, what's going on inside of you, no matter what's going on around you, 
you're still going to have peace. You're going to be okay. And that's because you're looking through eternity eyes. And there's a big, big difference between the two. You've heard me talk about recently, a little more recently, about eternity eyes and worldly eyes. But there's a world of difference between the two. With eternity eyes, when you're looking through eternity eyes, you see things in a whole new way. You get a whole new perspective. Because what eternity eyes do, they enable you to stand back from that picture. To, to stand back from this life, this world, and to see much more of the whole picture there. You don't see everything. You'll see that when you get to heaven, but you see much more of that picture. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about here. I want to look at that Isaiah passage that uh, we read, that Paul read today. I'm going to start with verse 1. I'm going to do six verses. So your job is to listen carefully. I want you to try to pick up the, the tone of this prophecy of Isaiah's. Pick up, use the, look at the words that he's using here. So let me just read that to you. It says, the wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom like the crocus. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it. The majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who have an anxious heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap like a deer and the tongue of the mute sing for joy. Okay, and this prophecy goes on, but I think he got a good taste of that right there. Let me try to explain a little bit about what was happening there, a little bit of the background. Uh, the people of Israel, once again, were in exile. They, they were not very good people. You know how it always worked with them. They would love the Lord, then also they would focus on this life. Well, th they were going through an oppression here by, by the Assyrians. And so naturally they were distraught, they were disgusted, they were angry, they were frustrated. They were feeling totally abandoned by the Lord. And why is that? Because what they were doing... Their nose was right up against that picture once again. That's all that they could see. So with looking at it like this, naturally their future was a little blurry. It was a little fuzzy to them. And yet if you look at these verses that I just read to you, you, you got the tone. You look at the words there. It speaks of peace and healing and hope and relief and rejoicing. It talks a lot about rejoicing here, doesn't it? And, and why is that? Because this prophecy was speaking about the ultimate victory that the Lord God would bring to his people. Now, as I've shared with you oh, so many, many times, a prophecy can also point, it can point to what's coming ahead, but it can also go beyond that and point to other fulfillments as well. And I think that's what was happening here. Uh, first of all, what happened was that uh, the, the prophecy was fulfilled in Israel coming back from their exile and coming back to Jerusalem. That was fulfilled. But it goes way beyond that as well. Uh, listen to verse 10. It says, And the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing, with everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain gladness and joy and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Okay, that's just one of the verse, but you, you can see that that goes way beyond this everlasting joy and, and all the other things that, that Isaiah is talking about here. That was pointing to the ultimate restoration, the ultimate healing that would come from the Messiah. It was speaking of the Messianic age here, okay? And so that prophecy then, it not only pointed to Israel coming back to Jerusalem, it pointed to Jesus' first coming, and it also points to Jesus' second coming as well. Uh, look at that passage in Matthew. Jesus said that, Go tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight and the lame walk. Lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear and the dead are raised up and the poor have the good news preached to them. Isn't that what Isaiah was prophesying about? That, that very same thing. And now here it was beginning to take place. Uh, Jesus came into this world to bring salvation and life, eternal life, and the kingdom of heaven all to us. And here we see it happening. All right, now let's go back to Isaiah. That prophecy that, that Isaiah brought to these people, what it did was it actually gave them strength. 
and peace and hope because what it made them do, it, it made them change their eyesight. Where they were looking at the world, now they stepped back and they could see the Lord more clearly. They could see all that they had in the Lord. They could see, be reminded once again that they were God's people. And, and that is what, what helped them so much. That is what was happening here. The kingdom of heaven and all of that was becoming so much of a, of a reality, so much more to them. And that is what was taking place. That's what enabled them to, to look past their circumstances, to look past what was going on and enable them to step back and look more clearly at the whole picture. And that's what happens with us too. It brings us the same strength, the same peace, the same hope. When we lift up our eyes to the Lord, folks, and what I mean by that, we change our eyesight. We go from the worldly, we take our eyes off of this life, this world, and we focus on the Lord God. We focus on everything that we have in Christ Jesus. Everything that He has done. We see God's love for us so clearly. And all that He has done for us, all that He has given to us, all that we have, because He loves us this, this much. That's what happens. And this is the most amazing thing that we have this. It's the same thing that Israel experienced. Everything changes for us because our eyesight is different. All right, let me let me give you an example of this. Okay, we all know we all know the emptiness, the despair, the guilt, the doubt, the worries, the fear, the uncertainty, everything that our sins press down on us. Okay, we, we all know that. We know how, how miserable we are. We know the uncertainty that it, it brings to us. It still hurts. Those sins still bother us. They, they still hurt. And they still make us feel so far away from God. However, when we take our eyes off of that, and we take our eyes off of worldly things, and we lift up our eyes to the Lord, we lift up our eyes to the cross of Christ, and we lift up our eyes to the empty tomb, Wow, that's incredible relief that it brings to us. It is freedom that it, it, it brings to us. There is such an amazing peace in knowing in our heart, knowing to the depth of our soul that our God loves us, that our Lord and Savior Jesus went to that cross and he freed us from that prison that we were in, that our sins put us in, that oppression that it put us in. He, he, he destroyed the power that sin and death and hell and Satan had over us through his sacrifice on that cross and his triumphant resurrection. And in doing that, he has made us children of God. And as children of God, that means who is God to us? If we're his children, what do you think that means? He's our father. He's Abba. He's daddy. Understand that. And our Father loves us more than anyone in this world could ever love us. He loves us as no father has ever loved his children before. He loves us that much and he walks with us every day and he carries us when he has to carry us. But he is always there. And Jesus made that a reality for us. Right now, this is a reality for us. And it just brings praise to him. It brings thanksgiving to him. He has saved us. He has made us his own. I want you to understand that in your heart. I want, I want to look at another passage here from Isaiah. It's Isaiah 53. It's, I'm sure it's familiar to many of you. Listen to this. It's talking about the suffering servant, the, the Messiah. It's talking about Jesus. It says, surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his stripes, we are healed. With his stripes, with his wounds, we are healed. And folks, it is a complete and total healing. This is that saving gospel of Jesus Christ that we dearly need to hold on to because this is what gives us eternity eyes. We've got to understand that with, with these eyes, we can so clearly see that our God, the Almighty God, who just happens to be our Heavenly Father, that He's in control of things. No matter what's going on in our life, no matter what's happening to us, no matter what's going on around us, our God is in control. And our God is the God of history. 
And he is carrying out his plan right now to bring you and I home, just as he did with Israel. And when we see and are looking through eternity eyes, this is exactly what we see. Now the truth is though that most people in this world are going through this life looking through worldly eyes. And we're part of that at one time or another, aren't we? We've all looked at this world in worldly eyes and we've all got down on the dumps and that because of that. We got angry, frustrated, all of that. And the reason why, what, what I should say, the, what happens because we're looking through these worldly eyes, we can't see the picture. All we can see is what's right in front of our nose. And that's it. You know, we don't see so much the, the spiritual, we see the physical. We see the struggles, we see the difficulties. We, we, we see the obstacles that, that, that we are facing. And when we get this way, folks, we are treating this life and this world as if it's everything. We're treating this life that this is all that there is. And that's where the fear, the doubt, the worry, everything, it comes from that. There's no healing in looking through world, worldly eyes. However, when that saving gospel takes hold of our life, and I mean that, when your trust is in Jesus and, 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 and His promises and in His word, and, and you see everything that you have in Him, that's what gives you those eternity eyes. And as I said, when you have these eternity eyes, what can you do <coughs> You get to step back from that picture that you're standing way too close to. And you get to see the whole picture. You get to see God even in bigger, brighter than you ever have before. And that's what brings healing. When you see through eternity eyes, that's what brings you that, that amazing healing that only our Lord Jesus can offer us. And what this healing does is removes blindness to our Lord. In other words, we get to see Him. And we see for eternity. That's why they're called eternity eyes, or at least that's what I call them. When we see this way, when we see our Lord like this, I guarantee you, 100%, I guarantee you, the door is wide open to all kinds of healing in our life. <coughs> the floodgates have been opened. To this healing in our life. And that's why today I'm going to ask you to do something. Actually, I'm going to encourage you to do something. No, I'm going to beg you to do something. As I mentioned earlier, when it comes to healing, I believe what blocks it so much is us. We have issues with God. We have problems. We have walls that we put up because, because we think we're going to get protected by it. Get rid of those walls. I'm asking and I'm begging you, let go of yourself. Strive to let go of yourself. Strive to let go of those worldly eyes. Don't live in that blindness anymore. Tear down those walls. They're no good anyways. They don't help. Just open your life completely to the Lord. Open your heart to Him and trust in Him. Trust fully in your Lord. And from that trust, you can open every single part of your life, every area of your life, even those dark areas, and His light can flood in to those areas. I know I'm overstressing this, but it's so vital for us to open our whole life to the Lord. Be open to Him. Because that's when we get healing. His healing. Whether we're talking about physical healing or emotional or spiritual healing, that's when we know His healing. And so it is my prayer for you and me today that the Holy Spirit would indeed work powerfully in all of us, giving us these eternity eyes and bringing to us this amazing healing that only our Lord Jesus can bring to us. So let's pray about this now. Would you pray with me, please? Father, You take care of us. We're your children. You love us as no one has ever loved us. And we praise you for that. I ask now that you would open our hearts by the power of your spirit. That every area of our life would be open to you. Help us to step back from that picture. To step back from this life and this world. To see you <coughs> so clearly. 
Because that is what brings us healing. Father, work in our hearts and in our lives right now and make this happen. By the power of your spirit, I pray that you would make this happen. In Jesus' name, amen.